code reusability achieving the loose coupling and to achieve the multiple inheritance to achieve the multiple inheritance so we have seen we have seen 100% abstraction and code reusability we have seen that yesterday and even we have seen the multiple inheritance so i'm going to show you something like a loose coupling using interfaces how can we achieve the loose coupling okay so let me share my screen let's start ubuntu please let me know whether you guys are able to see my screen or not Yes, sir. So I'm going to create an interface. I I can take a class itself. Or I can I can take a class and in a single class I can take multiple interfaces. So I'll just demonstrate everything in a single class. Okay, for that I need a main method. Let's take a scope, create it. So before that, now I'm going to take interface. Sorry. Interface. SHAP shape you can have a method here draws a method okay so you can also take the same example with a bank okay what we have seen in the previous classes you can also take the same same bank example but here I'm taking the different example so class circle implements shape so if i do if i implement the shape it will ask me to add the unimplemented method so i need to provide the body for unimplemented method let's say here i'm saying that circle the same way with multiple other classes let me Let me say square let me share something called rectangle Let's take a new class triangle. Triangle. Okay. So what I have done here, I have a different different classes, different different shapes, and the shape is an interface which has a method called draw. Okay. So whoever implements the shape, they have to draw something. I mean they have to draw their shape okay so th there's an the implementation for each and every myth in, in each and every class so now what I'm going to do here let's look at so very simple one circle C equal to new circle C dot draw and square sq equal to new so square sq dot draw 
and readable okay now t dot draw so if i execute this program so they are have a respective shapes right so now let's say let's say i have something called these are tightly coupled with if you see here If you see here, they are tightly coupled with each type. Let's say this, if you take C, it is tightly coupled with the circle, circle. So these are all siblings, siblings of, these are all chains of a, a class called shape, but these are all each other are siblings like circle and square, rectangle and triangle came from a child of shape, right? But even though they are siblings or they are child of a same parent, if you try to say c equal to s sq look at here type mismatch cannot convert your square to circle you cannot convert a square to circle so what it is telling you cannot assign other object to into another object because they're tightly coupled with their type so instead of that if i say shape sh equal to new circle now sh dot draw now here my parent is referring my parent is referring child object my parent is referring child object now what is output here can anyone tell me what is output here Circle. circle because in the parent reference but he is actually referring your child object actually he is referring child object so here I am circle this is output now now this sh can take square because sh is the parent when I say now sh dot draw when i say ss dot draw now what it will do before it was calling circle but on the next statement because of i have changed the reference of it i have changed the object of the reference so what has happened it is started executing square it means here it is not tightly coupled with a type what does it mean your parent can refer any of the child your parent can refer any of the child and the on the fly I mean they can change their type they can change the type see when you come here here the type of the shape is shape only but the the, the object it is referring is square but when it comes here the object it is referring is chain, uh, circle right so it means here it is not tightly coupled with the type so this is called so loose coupling so this is called tightly coupled with the respective data type this is tightly coupled with the respective data type is that clear guys any doubt this is called this is called polymorphism whatever we have seen overriding is a polymorphism this is this is also a dynamic polymorphism overloading is another type of polymorphism i mean that's called static polymorphism so we'll start now the, with the polymorphism so are you guys clear about inheritance uh, abstraction yeah
Interface is loosely coupling or tightly coupling? Interfaces are loosely coupled. But uh, you you told right, uh, sir, these are tightly coupled uh, with the object. These are tightly coupled. The first four lines, the, the first four objects, which is C, which is a, the circle, square, right? These are the tightly coupled. With the, these are tightly coupled with respect to data type. Okay. So when it comes to the line number 61, when it comes to line number 61, okay. yeah, now here all of a sudden, so if you create something like, let me say, uh, let me show you shape sh1 equal to new circle shape sh2 or else I can say this one s circle sc shape circle I can say this one ssq shape, shape square This is called anonymous class. Now, my SC can have, SC can take SSQ. No issue. Because when I tried the same thing here, C equal to S, SQ, it was not able to. It was telling, cannot. But here, it is able, but both are same objects. It is a circle object and square object. Here also, SQ is a square object and C is a circle object, but they are not able to assign each other because they are different type, because they are tightly coupled with their respective type. But when it comes to here, it is not tightly coupled with the respect to data type. Is it clear? Yes, Ravi, clear. Yeah, I know it's clear. Okay, so this is called, this is called dynamic polymorphism. This is called dynamic polymorphism. We'll see more in details of the dynamic polymorphism. So are you guys clear about inheritance, abstraction, interfaces? Uh, Vira? Yeah. Uh, uh, so what happens when we uh, give that SE equal to uh, S, SH1? This one? Uh, SSQ. This one? Yeah. So now this your SC is referring, look at what it is referring, it is referring now square, square. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, thank you. How that is referring square? Because it is assigned, the object is assigned by this Yeah, guy. okay, SC equal to SSQ, right, right. Yeah. Clear guys? So let's move to next topic, something called polymorphism. So can anyone tell me what is a polymorphism? One name, many forms. One name, many forms. Okay. Any other definition? What is a polymorphism? Saraswati, Sunil, Kishore, anyone? One form will act as a many functions. Okay. The name itself is saying that polymorph. Poly means many forms. So the best example what we have seen is method overloading. Method overloading. Right? And we have so method overloading, if you see the name is same, but because of the number of parameters are different, the number of parameters are different, it is acting differently based on the based on the parameter. I think we have discussed about them, right? Yeah, we have discussed about them here. See here, because of the here zero parameter, here zero parameter, so I'm my behavior is this. Here I have one parameter with a different data type. This is my behavior. This is one parameter with a different data type again. So different behavior. So what does it mean? The name is same. The name is same. 
but based on the number of parameters the behavior is changing right so if you if you look at here if you look at here so at the compile time at the compile time they easily come to know what is this method and what is the behavior of it because you are passing some values from here 20L and 200L it means it's looking for long both the long values this is the one so at the time of compile itself it will come to know what is my what is the behavior of the respective method or what the code I'm going to execute so this is called your method overloading is called method overloading is called static polymorphism or compile time polymorphism or some people will say static binding Static polymorphism, compile time polymorphism, static binding, all three are referring the same. Okay. Is is that, is that clear, guys? Static polymorphism. There are two types of polymorphisms. One is a static and dynamic polymorphism. Static polymorphism is nothing but a method of overloading. So which has the same um, form, I mean same name, and it lacks differently based on the parameter you pass or based on the uh, based on the call uh, based, on, uh, based on the number of parameters you pass or based on the method you call the uh, the behavior changes okay because of the name same so it will not act same behavior it will be having a different different behaviors so that's called static polymorphism and we have seen something called method overriding in inheritance method overriding we have seen something called method overriding what is a method overriding method of overriding a parent has some method parent has a method a child also has the same method name number of parameters are also same number of parameters also same but behavior is different parent has a behavior the name behavior name or you can say method name the same name a child also has a number of parameters also same the number of parameters also same but the behavior is different so when you say that in the child class when you say now so let me show you one thing guys here bank bank b equal to new s bank when i say b dot get interest B dot get interest which method will get call which method will get it call here just now we discussed loose coupling right bank B equal to new s bank so B dot get interest which method will get call which interest it will come what is the output of this If you want, you can look at. If you want, you can look at here. What is the output will come here, guys? Bank B equal to new S bank. B dot get interest. What is the output of this method? Yes, bank. Yes, bank. Yes, bank. Yes, bank. Yes, bank. Interest rate. Yes, because your parent is referring a child class. Your parent is referring a jail class. So when I say B dot get interest at the time of compilation, your compile will not come to know whether I need to call the child class method or whether I need to call the parent class method. It will not come to know at the time of compilation. It will come to know at the time of runtime only. It will come to know at the time of runtime only. So that's what that that's the reason we'll call it as a runtime polymorphism. That's why we'll call it as a runtime polymorphism. Your method overriding is an example for runtime polymorphism. Polymorphism is name is same but acting differently, different different behavior. So this bank is returning percent rate of interest as a five, but your S bank is returning rate of interest of ten. When I say bank B equal to new S bank, the rate of interest will return ten. The rate of interest will return ten.
at the time of compilation will not come to know at the runtime only it will come to know clear guys about the dynamic polymorphism any doubts yes sir okay so this is overriding and this is the most of the interviews they will ask so even I have come across the same question so don't give me a simple answers like method overloading and method overriding can you tell me a differently is there any method overriding so we can achieve the method overriding differently so this is what they're expecting method overloading everyone can tell method overloading is the best example for the of polymorphism but can you tell me apart from this is there anything else so this is the one they're expecting a parent is referring to child class when you call from the child when you call from the child any method so it will call I mean call from the child in the sense your parent is referring a child object when you say b dot get uh, get interest or b dot I mean uh, your parent reference dot child object it means all the child methods will be available for there okay clear guys now let me show you one more thing here we can achieve the dynamic polymorphism through our methods we can override the parent class methods we can override the parent class methods and also we can achieve runtime polymorphism or dynamic polymorphism through behaviors it means through methods we cannot achieve through a variables let's say here I have I have something called into branch ID branch ID let's say it is 100 let's say it is 100 when I say same thing the chain classes let me say it is 110 let me say in Citibank I'll say something different 120 now now look at guys here b dot when I say b dot branch ID which ID will come here what is the output of this 100 or 110 or 120 what is the output of this can you scroll up uh, yeah so my bank has 100 s bank has 110 city bank has 120 so 110 110 let's look at what it is printed 100 100 why that's what I'm trying to say we can achieve the dynamic polymorphism through methods only we cannot override parent class variables we cannot achieve we cannot achieve dynamic polymorphism or runtime polymorphism via a variables a parent class variable cannot be overridden okay so when I say b dot get interest I'm able to access the child class interest but when I say b dot a variable branch ID it is still referring your parent class branch only okay uh, frankly speaking I also don't know why it is behaving like that uh, I tried to get some information about it but I didn't get any information so I mean I'm also blindly following that as as uh, as it is so the variables you cannot override you can achieve the dynamic polymorphism using a, a methods only I also really don't know why for variables you are not able to uh, achieve the dynamic polymorphism why we can achieve the methods so I, I really don't have a clear idea about it frankly talking but I know through methods only we can achieve we cannot achieve through variables uh, if any, anyone can update me yes I'll, I'm ready to update my knowledge Sunil any idea why it is 
why it is behaving like that okay yeah. is that clear guys about the polymorphism any doubt about the polymorphism vaishnavi teja sunil saraswati sai and others uh vira uh, if brand child is not there in the parent class then it will call the child class uh, variable right very good question let's look at what it is telling you don't have in the parent so when i when i'm it is referring your parent object for the variable if the variable is not there it will give a error right compile time error no field okay right actually it is that's what are the variables are referred by parent variable you are telling that variable itself is not there then it's a compile time error then it's a compile time error okay thanks sir yeah. okay so okay. that's about the polymorphism so any doubts about the polymorphism let's move to next topic if you guys don't have any doubt so let's move to next topic something called access modifiers any doubts guys any doubts nikesh ai teja saraswati sunil vaishnavi harika kishor okay let's talk about access modifiers what are the access modifiers what are the access modifiers what are the access modifiers public private uh, protect okay okay access modifiers are access modifiers so let me write from to restrict to more widen private default protected public okay so i'm not going to explain very in detailly because we are very much aware of these things by seeing our c c++ and different languages but i will be explaining what is it is okay private if you declare any variable or any method in a class as a private it is restricted to within that class only within the class only it cannot acts you cannot access those variables outside the class very simple So what are the variables? What are the methods you have declared as a private in a class? Those are within the class only. You can access them directly within the class, or you can access them through a public method. If you are calling through a public method outside, you can access, but it's actually a public access. So don't get confused with it. So if you are declaring as a private, it's a private within the class. It cannot be accessed. Okay, let me draw a simple uh, table. So let me put it here in this way like yeah that way i can make it very simple within class within class within package within package if package if the subclass if subclass outside the package outside package 
outside the package if it is a private yes we can access within the class within the class within the package no we cannot access within the package because it is not exposed from one class if i if i declare any class as a private it is within that class only i can access i cannot access outside the class i cannot at all access outside the class if i'm not able to access outside the class only there is no point if it is outside package or outside subclass no if subclass outside package it is okay it's outside package outside pick package pkg default yes within the package or within the class you can access and within the package you can access you can access within the default see if you see all these are default default is with if you didn't define any anything any uh, be, uh, any access modifier in a class that's called default access modifier that's called default access modifier that is called default access modifier within the package means what is a package guys you guys are very much aware of the package means the folder structure let's say here i have something called example as a package inheritance as a package constructor as a package Cla class demo is a package these are the different different packages if i have one class in example if i have any class in example let's say let me take sib demo this is one class okay so i have declared it's a, it's a default so i don't have any data type uh, access modifier for this right so i didn't define any access modifier for this i can access this i can access this in this class in this class in this package i can access any other places i can access any other places like and i have here i can access in the polymorphism demo here i can access or i can access in this package it means in this folder in this example if i declare anything as a default i can access them within this package within this package and in the same class same class and within the package and so outside the package no one second guys yeah so outside the package no if you outside the package is not possible even though if it is a subclass also not possible sorry it's not possible not possible protected within the class yes within the package yes within the outside the package but the class is subclass i created a subclass if it is a subclass then you can access that's the protected outside the package it is outside the package let's look at here i have some class called sib okay in this package in other package i have created as a subclass for this i have created another class for subclass for this you can access outside you can access outside the package you can access outside the package and you cannot access you cannot access outside the package without having easy relation or parent child relation if you have a parent child relation in other package yes you can access if you don't have that relation you cannot access public means it's very much open you can access everywhere within the class within the package outside the package if it is subclass outside the package so public means it is able to access anywhere any class within the you know any from anywhere you can access it it means uh, within the class within the package outside the package even if it is a subclass you can access okay if you didn't specify any access modifier the default modifier is default you know it explicitly say that it's a default by default it's a default are you guys clear about access modifiers anisha harika harika is left it seems anisha masood ragu who are not from the programming background is this clear nikesh is this clear yes sir okay so this is about access modifiers and there are something called access specifiers there are something called access specifiers
access specifiers. We already seen some access specifiers. Static, abstract, static, abstract. Abstract we have seen right. Static we have seen right. Final. What is the final, guys? If you declare any variable as a final, if you declare any variable as a final, the variable is a constant. This comes in the form of abstract class, abstract method. Class method. This is block variable class method. So you can apply the static for you can apply the static block. You can apply the static variable. You can apply the static classes. Static classes has to be inner class. Okay, we'll talk about that later. And static method. Static method. Abstract for class and method. There is no abstract variable. There is no abstract block. Final. Final variable. You can declare for the class. You can declare for the variables. Uh, sorry, methods. Static variable means it's a constant. You cannot change. Once you declare, you cannot change the value of it. Static variable or final variable. If you declare a final, the variable is final. That's it. You cannot change the value entire life of it. Class. If it is a final class, if it is a final class, you cannot create, you cannot create child for it. It means it's a bachelor class. So lifetime bachelor. So method. If you declare a final method, it is you cannot override that method. You cannot override that method. If you declare method as a final, that's it is a final. You cannot create you cannot override that method in a child class. Okay. There is something called synchronize. There is something called synchronize. This comes in the two forms. Synchronize block. Synchronize method. Synchronize block and synchronize method. So this comes in the multi-threaded environment. This comes in a multi-threaded environment. We will talk about it later. It means if you declare anything as a synchronized, only one thread can access at a time. For a very high level, keep in mind very high level. If it is a synchronized, if it is a synchronized, only one where one thread can access at a time. One thread can access at a time. Next, transient. There is something called transient. And we will talk this about serialization part. When we are going to talk about the serialization, this is for variables only, guys. This is for variables only. Transient variables. And there is something called volatile. Volatile. This is also for variables. This two will come in. Uh, this is also come in the multi multi threaded environment, and this comes in a serialization. Okay, these are the some access specifiers. These are the few access specifiers. There is something called native. So I'm not going to talk about the native because it is the uh, suppose if you are if you want to use any native libraries in Java, so we'll go with the native. Okay, so these are some access specifiers. So this below three are we will discuss later. These three are we will discuss later. Synchronize we'll discuss in the multi-threaded environment. So transcend we are going to discuss very soon. So when you're going to discuss about the serialization part and volatile also will be discussing in the multi-threaded part. This two will be discussing when the threads we uh, when we're discussing about threads. Uh, as I said before, for Hadoop, we don't need thread concept. If anyone interested to understand the threads, we will have a separate class for them. Okay, for Hadoop, we don't need to understand the threads. But if you have a high idea, it's good enough. If you don't have idea, also not a problem. We can we can work on it. Not a problem. Are you guys clear about the access specifiers? Are you guys clear about the access specifiers? Anisha, Harika, Kishore. Raghu. 
Yes, yeah. So let's talk about something called encapsulation. Encapsulation. Can anyone tell me what is encapsulation? Can anyone tell me what is encapsulation? Capsule. Capsule. What is a capsule? What it contains? Binding code and data together. Yes. Very good. So if you if you take an exam a example as your capsules, the capsule contained multiple medicines inside blue color red color white color different kind of colors those are not just a colors there's different kind of medicines there are different kind of medicines what does it mean you are binding your data member and member functions together and you're showing as a single entity single entity your capsule is single but inside there are multiple things like your object is an example your class can you can say an example so but ideally so object is the best example Object is an example. The very suitable example for encapsulation is Java Beans. Java Beans. What is a Java Beans? What is a Java Beans? What is a Java Bean? We will talk about Java Bean now. Encapsulation. What is that? Wrapping up of your code or your data member and member function into a single unit in a single unit is nothing but a encapsulation the best example is a capsule in the real time but when it comes to the java java beans are the suitable example why we need encapsulation why should i provide encapsulation when you provide encapsulation you can achieve read only you can suppose you want to provide your class is only read only read only access Read only access does not mean that uh, no. What is the permissions we have in Linux or some uh, or Windows? Uh, not permissions. Your object can access only you can read the values from the access uh, the object. It means you can access the values. Let's say I have a ID, name, and salary. You can access that ID. You can access the salary. You can access the name. You cannot change those values. Object values and write only. We can achieve this using Java beans. What is actually what is the meaning of the Java beans? Java beans are a class which contains the private variables, which contains the private variables, a class which contains the private variables, class, let's say person. I'm taking as a person as a bean. The person I have a ID, name, income. I have these three all are private all are private if it is a private can I access them outside the outside the class if they are these are these variables are private can I access them outside the class Anisha Masood Nikesh Raghu and others no I cannot access them outside the class right no. so what does it mean the variable themselves is not exposed to the outside the world but we have something called setters and getters we have something called setters and getters setters and getters what are they these are the public methods where you can provide access your private variables through these public methods let's look at uh, we'll take a simple example here we'll take a simple example I'm going to create saying that encapsulation demo. I'm going to create a package com dot v dot encapsulation. So I need a main method here. Save to finish. So encapsulation demo. So let's look at here class person I have private int ID private string name 
I have private double income okay now these are private variables I cannot access them directly outside the class so what I will do I will do I will create something called setters and getters so guys if you want to create a setters and getters it's pretty simple you just go to tool right click source generate setters and getters generate setters and getters setters and getters are nothing but setters means setting the values getters means getting the values very simple you can select what are the variables you want to implement I have selected all the variables just say so very simple these are just a simple normal methods guys nothing great I mean nothing difficult here public int get ID getting the ID what it is returning returning the ID suppose you want to set the value for this ID set ID you want to get the name get name you want to set the name set name you are setting the name while you are setting you have to pass the name if you pass the name equal to this name okay so setters and getters are nothing but setting the values to a, a private variables getting the values from the private variables okay now let me have one constructor also here so, so our constructor is always good to have after the variables constructor also you no need to type so we already have seen this source generate constructor using fields because your tool is the tool is make you uh, know very uh, comp I mean make you far uh, why we use the IDs ID like Eclipse IntelliJ my Eclipse why you use these tools because it will make your code faster I mean you can you can develop your application faster and it will also help you for the syntaxes right so that's why we use the tools go with the constructor I have a constructor which takes ID which takes name which takes income okay so let me create an uh, object here let me create an object here let me create an object here person I can take a name new person ID you can give 101 or 1001 you can give a name as Vita Ravi. You can give income as some number. What was the number? Anyway, it's double. You can give double dot zero zero. Okay. Semicolon. And let's create one more person. See, normally we'll not be having a constructor in this guys okay so to demonstrate to you how we can act how how we can use I'm creating a constructor here normally we'll not be having constructor in the real time so let's remove the constructor in that case so let's use a default constructor only so I don't want you to confuse let's take a default constructor in this case so let's say Vira As I said, suppose if I want to set any values to this variables, which is a private, right? Those are those are the private. I cannot assign the values for them. So what I will do here, Ravi dot set ID. I'll pass some ID here. Ravi dot set name. I'll pass some name here. Ravi dot sets income not ID income will pass num some double value will pass some double value so let me take out take only one object so what does it mean you are this is a different class if you remember if you see this here if you observe here this is a different class okay instead of keeping in multiple classes multiple files are kept in a sing, single file so even if you're writing in a single file multiple classes those are different class files when you compile those will be having a different class files try to remember guys 
try to understand even though in a single file you are writing so many classes here one class there one class it does not mean all are one class no when you compile this code for each class it will create a separate class file dot class file okay so now I have set the values now here I have set the value suppose this object I want to pass to some other class suppose I want to pass this object to some other class let's look at here I'll make you exa uh, I'll make you understand very simple so not to worry so let me explain you in a detail one more time what I'm trying to do here I have something called person object here I have something called person class which has a private variables and public method public setters and getters okay so now I have created a person variable in other class a person object in other class I have set some values I have set some values now let's say I have something here I have something here a class With the method he will accept and he will print ID P dot ID. I don't need this so I, so I, so I, so I can directly take this okay okay I have taken is a private right I need to assign Still, it's not allowing me to do this. Change the visibility of the ID to package. Replace ID to getter. Okay, yeah, correct. So I don't need this. Yep, it's correct. I don't need these things. So why should I go with the direct ID? I have something called get ID. I have some methods already defined there. Name. Get name. Get name. Income. And here, I need to call this method for printing the values. I need to call this method for printing the call. Test it equal to new 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 but anyway I, I think it will not work properly because it that has a different that has a different entry and this has a different entry I'll, I'll try to show you okay I'll try to show you so, so. this one I should not do here that's what I'm trying to say I have to do it here because only one entry if it's a normal in a, in a big application you have that option but here it's a single application right let me what is the error this here I need to pass Ravi yep okay guys try to look at here what I'm trying to do so where is I'll explain again okay I'll explain in the real time as well so not to get confused I have a as I said I have a person class with the private variables and I have something called setters and getters okay so here my person is a class and Ravi is an object which has a private members and member function in a single unit the Ravi is a single object it has a single unit that's what I said an object an object is an example for the encapsulation but the best suitable example how we will implement that 
encapsulation in the Java. How will you implement? Example is different and implementation is different. The implementation will implement using Java Beans. We'll implement them using Java Beans. Okay, here I'm showing you an example. The Java Beans is nothing but a bean I have created using private variables and member function, public member functions. This is my Java Bean now. This bean, I have set my values, name, uh, Ravi and salary, some income or something. And I have passed this object to some other class. If you look at here, I have passed this. I need to pass this. Yeah, I have, I'm passing this to other object, other class here, the get person. I have passed to some other class. I have passed to some other class. So here I'm doing some operations. Let's say I'm doing some other operations. I want to do concatenation here something. I want to concat something here. I want to concat hi. Let's say I have did some concatenation. What I did in this, I have created, I have set some values and I passed that object to some respect other class. I'm trying to access it. So let's let's look at here. Let's look at here. So ID, hi, Vira Ravi, name, income, something it came. How it came? Because I have passed this value to other object. I have completely passed this object. In other object, I'm trying to use get get us so how it will work in the real time i know that you guys are confused how it will work in the real time let me show you how it will work in the real time so let's look at mvc pattern mvc means model view controller so don't get confused for the new guys who are so you will create object in one place and you will be having a database you will be having a database and you will be having a presentation presentation means web page this is a business controller this is controller this is model this is view so i'll i'll talk more about it later i mean if anyone want let's look at here you are creating a person object okay you have created a person object here you have a person class but the values are there in the table then ID, name, salary is there in the table, in the database, in the DB, okay, DB. So now I, you got that values, you got that values, you have assigned here, ID equal to this, name equal to this, salary equal to this. So the values were there in the database, you query the database and you got the values, you got the values. Now this values has to be display in the, this values has to display in the console, or console in the sense your web page then what you will do you will pass that object you will pass that object to your view view means your jsp your jsp or html whatever you write okay you will pass that object to this you will pass the object to this and here what you will do this person dot get id for display purpose id equal to how so you can use your html tags and all so you will display here you will display here so what you have done, you have a bean class, which is a person is a bean class. You have a bean class person. And from this class, we have queried for the specific ID. Let's say I want to get the search box. I have something called search box. In the search, I say ID equal to 100. And it will go to a database, get the details of the one, this value. Like it will query, select star from person where ID equal to this, 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 and it will give the values. That values are gone to again your servlet, servlet or your whatever the class you have written. The values are come to this, and you have set the values. How I set the values here? Let's look at guys. The same way, I have set the values. Same way, I have set the values. After setting the values, I need to pass to some other class to print because my servlet cannot print itself. It can print, but that's a very bad. That will be very bad model. Okay. What is this? That will be very bad model. So that's why we will not print anything using servlets. We will pass that object to a JSP, a JSP or whatever it is. Now there are so many other technologies are available. JSP for 
displaying in the web page displaying in the your web page so this is how the object is passing that's what i'm trying to say here the object is moving to other class the object is moving to other class and they are printing the values by using getters by using the getters this is how the java beans help you to write but actually your java bean is nothing but an implementation of your encapsulation the same thing i have done here what i have done i have created a person class from this class i have query let's say here my jdbc query is there let's say this is my jdbc my database query get the values and set it in the values and send to some other class send to some other class i'm printing here i'm printing here understand guys understand guys what is the java beans Anisha, Masood, Nikesh, Raghu. Oh, yes, sir. So this is the complete application I have explained here. Okay, Java means means nothing but a private members public methods. That's it, a Java bean. But here the implementation I have shown you in the application wise, how it will be useful in application. So this is how it will be useful in application. You will get the values from the database, assign the values to your bean, display that bean into or front end Anisha Masood uh, yes we are it's clear right so I know for the who are non who are not from Java background it's a little difficult to understand this but it's very simple you keep in your mind very high level Java bean is nothing but a class which has a private variables and public methods that's it that is an example of your encapsulation. The, the way you to implement this implementation implementation of your encapsulation is Java bean. Okay. Any doubts, guys? Any doubts? Any doubts? Please ask me. If you guys don't have any doubt, we can leave for the day. If you guys have any doubt, please stay back. Else, you guys can leave for the day. Yeah, Sai and Teja. Yes, yeah. Sai and Teja, please send me a programs as I discussed before. Please have a some, you know. Uh,